I went for a walk. Went for a walk. On a winter's day. Stopped into a church. Yeah, that's the same. <laughs> <laughs> no. Along the way. No. I'd be safe in Well, I got down on my knees. Got down on my knees. And I began to pray. And I began to pray. You know that preacher likes it warm. Damn, girl. <laughs> he knows I'm gonna stay. California dreaming. Yeah. Yeah. Hey guys, so we finally made it to San Diego. We've actually been here for about five days now, uh, mainly visiting with uh, the grandkids, and of course, Lisa is still working. So. Uh, she works every day, but from the road right now. Um, haven't uh, been able to come up with much to feature in a video so far on this trip. Um, the weather has been absolutely brilliant, and uh, we love that. So that's been real nice. Sunny, not a cloud in the sky, and about uh, high 60s every day. So that's been great. We're in a RV park uh, right in San Diego, actually in Escondido, a little bit north. Uh, which is where the uh, the kids live. So uh, we're only about two miles from them, which has been great, and uh, we're having a, having a lot of fun. So for this week's video, a buddy of mine suggested that we give you guys a tour of the inside of, uh, of our Airstream. And I thought, uh, that's a pretty good idea. I mean, not everyone's seen what the inside of an Airstream looks like, and uh, we can give you a quick tour, show you how we've got it set up and uh, what we like and what we don't like about it. All right, so let's do it. Okay guys, so this is uh, our 23 foot 2019 Airstream Flying Cloud. Um, we chose this model uh, because it was the smallest Airstream that came with two axles. So we wanted to have two axles and uh, for safety purposes, uh, as well as to carry more weight in the camper. At the time when we bought the camper, uh, we were traveling around the country doing art shows and I was carrying inventory inside the camper. So we needed that extra uh, ability to carry extra weight. Um, so that's why we went with this model. They did at the time make smaller models, but this was the smallest one with two axles. They also uh, had a few layouts of this model. Yep, exactly right. So the 23-foot uh, Flying Cloud came in three different levels of finish. The uh, Flying Cloud is the simplest level of finish. And then they had uh, the International and then one other... Tommy uh, Bahama. <laughs> yeah, one other type of finish. And what that meant was the cabinets and uh, the, the leather and so forth were different uh, different styles, different upgrades. Um, and like Lisa said, it also came in three different floor plans. So we've got what's called the 23 CB, CB meaning corner bed. Uh, the bed is in the back. They don't make this model anymore actually. Um, also at the time we had the option to do the 23 fb which was the front bedroom so right now you know airstreams they're known for having the, this wraparound windows at the front of the of the camper and um so for our model because the bedrooms in the back these you know our eating area and sitting area is here well, the FB model, the bedroom is up here in the front, and the entry to the uh, to the airstream is in the back of the camper. Uh, the seating area and the kitchen is located back there, and this would be a bedroom up here. Um, so, we'll when we show you the bedroom, we'll uh, explain why we went with this model. Anyway. Uh, we chose an Airstream uh, for a number of reasons, really three primary reasons. One was just the simplicity of these campers. Um, they don't come with slide outs and, you know, lots of fancy uh, gadgets and so forth. They're pretty, uh, pretty simple in design. 
Uh, the design really hasn't changed on the outside uh, in, you know, 75 or 80 years. I'm not sure, maybe even 100 years. <laughs> I should know more about the history. Um, they're aluminum, which is super cool, which is another reason that we chose the Airstream. We love the iconic nature and look of this camper. And then finally, the we felt like the Airstreams retained their value more than any other RV on the market. And that has proven out to be the case. Uh, again, we bought this camper new in 2019, and um, because of the pandemic and other reasons, of course, campers just skyrocketed in demand across all different types of RV, and prices just went through the roof. This particular uh, model here, today, only four years later, is 34% higher than it was four years ago when we bought it. And we have seen this exact model for sale used online for more than what we paid for it. <laughs> so, um, you know, old Airstreams from 50 years ago are selling for far more than what people paid for them back then, uh, obviously. So anyway, we, feel, we felt like this was a good investment grade RV. Uh, typically, RVs uh, will depreciate significantly the moment you uh, drive them off the lot, but not so with the with the Airstream. They're not inexpensive uh, for sure, and that gave us some heartburn. Uh, but you know, at the end of the day, we're we're happy with uh, making that investment. So, twenty three feet <clears throat> for the two of us and little girl, <laughs> who's down under the table here right now, uh, works out perfectly well. Uh, we've got, you know, everything we need. It's compact, but we have been on the road in this camper for up to four months at a time and have been perfectly comfortable. Um, so anyway, let's go through a little walk around and um, point out some of the features that we like and maybe what we don't like. Sound good? Sounds good. All right, let's do it. Okay, so Starting with the entry to the camper, again, it's at the front of the camper, and we like that. Um, great screen door. Uh, there's, you know, the typical type of uh, setup you have with any RV. But the unique thing about the Airstream, every door is unique to each Airstream. They're hand-built. Uh, of course, I've got it open and attached outside right now, but it's, it's almost like a space capsule door. And um, they are not mass ma manufactured. Every single door is different for every single Airstream. So that's pretty cool. We like that. Lisa and I actually visited the Airstream factory, which is outside of Columbus, Ohio, the year that we bought it in uh, 2019. And I got to see them assembling uh, the campers there. And it was, it was pretty impressive. So pretty awesome. Anyway, so that's the, the entry. You walk in and to the right is the dining area uh, or, or the table area. Of course, as with, again, most of these uh, campers, the table will convert to a bed. So this drops down, uh, the cushions rearrange and this whole front can be like a lounge. Um, I propose to my wife <laughs> on this lounge on Valentine's Day a number of years back. That's a, a whole different video. Um, anyway, so the front here, we have uh, storage in these two cabinets. Uh, plenty of storage, actually. This is a quick trip for us, so we didn't really uh, pack for a long term. Uh, so those are just some extra pillows that we had stored from last year's trip up there. And then in here is the stereo and DVD player. There is a television uh, that comes standard with these campers. Uh, and we've used that to watch some movies from time to time with the DVD. Otherwise, we don't really uh, do much with the TV. There's also uh, all of the USB and all the latest, you know, plug-in ability uh, exists in this camper. Uh, stereo system here. There's also a subwoofer under this uh, uh, seat here and it provides for great sound throughout the camper. There's speakers in the back over our bed and there are speakers up here. So it really makes a nice uh, sound system. 
Um, the cabinets are all made in Italy. So these are all Italian-made cabinets, one of the unique features of Airstream. I'm not sure that they're stu still doing that today, but uh, it was the case when we, when we bought ours, so that's kind of cool. They're high quality. Uh, this long chaise lounge we love. We typically camp little girl here uh, when we bring her, and it makes for great, you know, napping, or, or we can have company over here, and there's plenty of room uh, for lounging here in this salon area. One of Lisa's favorite parts of this camper is... All the windows and all the skylights. Look at all the light. It's fantastic. I love it. <laughs> so yeah, the... The fenestration in this camper is incredible. Uh, as she said, all these big windows, of course the wraparound windows, they all open as well. So we get great uh, cross flow and ventilation. We've got them open right now. It's beautiful in here. Um, the, the ceiling, so there's two layers of aluminum here. There's the inside layer and then the outside layer and then insulation in between. And the air conditioning system and heating system is vented. So all of these uh, vents here are for controlling flow of either AC or uh, the heating strip, the heat strips that are built into that condensing unit. There's a secondary heating system, which is the propane heating system. And those vents are at the base. So on especially, um, especially cold days, we'll turn that heater on and the air will blow out of these and of course warm this place up in no time. There is storage under these uh, salon seats as well uh, that open up and we can keep things in there. There's nothing in there right now. Again, we're not on this trip for very long. Um, and then also I'll point out on the ceiling all of the recessed lighting. So there's lights throughout this entire uh, camper and they're controlled from this location here and there is a dimmer switch so we can dim the lights as well, which is real nice. Into the kitchen, um, we love this feature where the sink kind of bumps out like this. It's a round sink. Uh, we do have a cutting board that fits over this sink and we can work on this cutting board if we like. Um, stove is here. It's a gas stove, three burners, and then of course our oven. Uh, so this is typical for, you know, a small RV this size. It works great for us. There's a vented hood as well with a fan. Um, storage again above. Plenty of storage for us. Again, it's only the two of us, although we do typically pack for four. So if we did have guests over, we could entertain uh, four people total. Um, below we keep our pans and pots, rubbish pail, uh, we keep extra water in the back, plenty of room there. Um, again, on the, in the front, I forgot to point out, there's also access to the same area from here. There's a separate storage uh, space here. We keep our first aid kit and supplies for little girl in there. And then of course under uh, this seat, there's also storage. We keep our exercise equipment in there. Um, moving back, one thing that we don't particularly like, right, hon? What would you say about this cooking space? I need more space. <laughs> yeah, it's not... I mean, when you really examine this, your counter space to work on is right here if you're doing any cooking. So you've got pans cooking here, and this is really all you have to work on if you need your sink to throw things in. So what we would suggest and what we may do one day, if you come back over here, you know, again, this is a lot of space here. We would suggest reconfiguring this area right here to be a counter with uh, cabinets underneath that we could work on. So it'd be like a butler kitchen where you could just be preparing food over here, uh, cooking it here, 
it makes a lot more sense and we don't believe that we'd be giving up that much uh, utility here by taking away this part of the seating. So we may build that out in a future uh, pro build project. So moving to the back here, still in the kitchen, it does come with a microwave. We rarely use that. We don't have a microwave at home. Um, so, but it's nice to have if, if we need it. Refrigerator is here. It's the Dometic, which is typical in RVs this size. Uh, plenty of room for us, as well as this freezer space up top. Um, again, not much in there right now. We've been taking the kids out to eat or eating at their place. Um, pantry here and this slide out uh, pantry as well works real well for us. We keep our um, utensils and so forth up top here and then uh, more cooking supplies in here. Uh, toaster, our, our uh, blender and so forth. Um, there are outlets throughout uh, the camper so when we're plugged into shore power we've got plenty of electricity. Uh, we also have solar panels on top of this camper and we do have um, pretty good uh, ability to boondock using those solar panels. This is our control panel here which gives us our gray and black water, uh, our fresh water, battery, etc. And then this is our, tells us about our solar generation. Moving back uh, to the back side of the Airstream now. This is the bedroom area and when I said the corner bed that's what this is. So the third model uh, that this Airstream comes in is bunk beds back here. Um, so you have bunk beds, you have this corner bed, or you have the front bedroom as the options for, for this particular year in this, in this size. We love the corner bed. Um, we're not big people. The biggest complaint that uh, people have about this corner bed is if you're sleeping at night and someone needs to get up and they're sleeping on that side and they need to use the restroom, they've got to climb over the other person. <laughs> um, that has not been an issue for us. Um, we're not getting up that much in the middle of the night, <laughs> thankfully, but uh, that may come in, in future years, who knows. Uh, but Lisa's small, I'm not that big, and it's easy to negotiate this bed, and it works real well for us. Um, in front of the bed, this is her bureau here. Um, there's lights in all of these, and uh, so lots of, lots of storage space in there. And then opposite this one, where is that turn off? There we go, is mine. And uh, again, Plenty of storage in here. You learn to pack efficiently when you're living on the road. You, you do only have so much space. Um, this divider is nice too if you want to have some privacy back here while you're dressing or napping or whatever. That's nice to have. And then under the bed, there's also storage. So, um, enough to put two of the big plastic bins, those totes will slide all the way back. So that works well. And you then, also find nooks and crannies, but I'll point out my shoe system. Yep, and there's nooks and crannies, so like Lisa takes advantage of every nook and cranny that she can, so her shoes are stuffed back here, and that works real well. Um, the, the vanity sink is actually in the bedroom, which is cool. So we've got, again, storage up top, storage in the medicine cabinets, and then storage under the sink as well. Um, there's an outlet there so she can plug in a uh, hair dryer or what have you when we're connected to shore power. This is the thermostat. It's the Dometic thermostat, which is popular in lots of RVs. Works real well. This is a cool feature. This is actually the bathroom. So this door works such that you have this extra space when it's closed this way, but when you're in this space, it will close like this. So that extra space be actually comes into the bathroom. And so bathroom has a separate commode area. 
with windows for viewing. <laughs> and uh, and then this is the shower, and it's pretty big. I'm six foot tall. I'm standing up with my hat on in here. And again, <clears throat> nice efficient slide there, and it's a handheld shower. Uh, so this works real well for us. Storage above the bed. Keep some sweaters up there for this trip. And again, lots of windows. So there's overhead. We've got the fantastic fans both uh, here and in the front. They're thermostat controlled. Um, more uh, power outlets as well as a cable outlet. If you wanted to put a TV above the bed, you could do that. Um, overhead lighting for reading. We're big readers, so this is appreciated. And of course, there are speakers under there as well, uh, which I mentioned earlier. <clears throat> okay, guys, so that's a quick tour of our 2019 23-foot flying cloud named Maggie. Uh, and if you're wondering about that name, Lisa is distantly related to Ferdinand Magellan, the famous Portuguese explorer. And so Maggie is named after Magellan. Um, this is our one of our exploring uh, toys. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, thanks for joining us today. Sorry about the uh, quick video. Um, next week, we'll try to come up with something. Again, we've, I think we only have about one or two more weeks on the road, and then we'll be back up to, uh, back up to the homestead property. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't yet. Smash that like button if you enjoyed the video. We'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. Went for a walk on a winter's day. day.